Hello, everyone. Welcome to join this class. This class is Database Management System. This is Dr. Gao. I'm an associate professor of Department of Information Management in Quanshan University. I'm very happy to be here to share some experience about database management system with you. Before the class is started, I would like to briefly introduce syllabus about this course. This course includes two parts. One is theoretical lecture, and the other one is database system practice. The whole course accounts for 21 hours. And I will spend most of the time on explaining the part of theory related to database. As to the theoretical lectures, it should be operated in classroom, but it's unfortunately it has to be processed via internet because of COVID-19 outbreak. However, I will explain these concepts as clearly as I can. And this class will be operated under the assumptions that not anyone in the class has had experience with database in the past. So it is intended to bring you out the basic levels of understanding various basic concepts about database. This part accounts for 14 hours, and we will um, introduce these things. First, introductions. So I will use one hour to explain. Why, why is database and why should we use database and the importance of database application in our daily life and the lens relational database including data models that is how does this data can um, be stores in relations and uh, how does this data can be operated very well. This part we will use two hours to complete. And the third part is database design. Here's ER models, which is the uh, techniques of helping people to engage in database design will introduce here. After that, we will discuss some real cases. And this part will last six hours. Data query with SQL language will be demonstrate this with three hours. Finally, is normalization, which is the techniques of helping people um, engage in database design. As to the database system practice, here we allocate seven hours to complete. Uh, basically, I hope this part can be operated in classroom, but finally, it will depend on the situations of COVID nineteen pandemic. The textbook used in this class is database system concept the seventh editions. The materials described in this book will 
will be talked about and discussed later. Now let's start today's lecture. In this lecture, we will have introductions about database system. In this chapter, I would like to bring you a overall concept about database management system. So in this chapter, we will introduce what is database management system and why do we use database system. In fact, there are various database system application in our daily life. So later, I will introduce some of the system. And then database architectures and components will be introduced. What's the roles of users and the administrators in database world? Finally, I will talk about the history of database system. First is database systems. From the names of database, we can imagine it is a repository help us to store a lot of data. It's right. It is actually a repository to store a large amount of data. And this data is stored for certain purpose. So we can regard database is the collections of interrelated data for a certain enterprise and for a certain purpose. In order to access these data, it's usually to retrieve this data by a set of programs. That is, the database system is built to provide users with the environments that is both convenient and efficient to use. From these figures, it can be found that database systems not only consist of the part of repository, it also contains database management system, which we also can call it DBMS. DBMS is the bridge between users and the database. Because one size is humans and the other size is machines, so both of the parts cannot communicate each other. They have to rely on DBMS to improve communications. And the task of DBMS is to interpret the command from users and convert them into the commands that machines can understand. After executions, the database will return the results to DBMS, which can help convert these results into the formats that humans can understand. So with DBMS, users can communicate with database very well. Now let's talk about the purpose of using database systems. If data is stored in multiple files formats, the duplication of information in different files is likely to result in data redundancy and inconsistency. 
and because we have to write a new programs to carry out each new task for reading the data story in file, it will lead to difficulty in accessing data. And the data isolations is likely to occur due to multiple files and the format. And you also have integrity problems. If we want to set integrity con constraints on the file data, for example, we want to limit account balance have to be more than zero. This kind of constraints will become buried in program codes rather than being stated explicitly. That is, we are hard to set integrity constraints explicitly on the data. In addition, atomicity of updates is hard to achieve in file system. For example, if there is values occurs in the fund transfer from one account to another, it's hard to identify whether the trans transactions complete or not, and these values may leave data in an inconsistent state with partial updates, which may bring some problems in the future. And the concurrent access by multiple users is another problem. For example, if there are two people, one of them want to read the balance and the rest one wants to update it by withdrawing monies at the same time. The concurrent access exists and this uncontrolled concurrent access may lead to inconsistency. And security is another consideration for file system. In file system, it's hard to restrict who can use which part of data. And these problems caused by using file system can be resolved properly by using database system. That is why Database systems can be used widely. Since database is so useful, now let's take a look at what kind of database applications are usually used in our daily life. In modern enterprise, there are so much enterprise information is stored in database. For example, in sales systems, customers' products purchase are stored in database and used for more applications for sales improvement. And accounting system stores payments received access data. Human resources, stores, employees, salaries, payroll, taxes, relevant data. In addition to enterprise information, manufacturing data is usually stored in database. It includes productions inventories, orders, supply chains, etc. In the fields of banking and finance, the customer information accounts 
informations are usually stored in database, and the credit card transaction finance transactions are also stored in database and and used for other purpose. University is the units usually use database. They usually store the registrations, grades, relevant data in database. In airlines companies, they usually store reservation schedules in their database, telecommunications, store records of calls, tax, etc., website service, use database to be a repository of records online retailers, online advertisement, and documents database is another application of database navigation system can maintain the location of variety places or geographies relevant data. In recent decades, database has been successfully used for in many fields. Now let's take a look at what kinds of database applications can be seen in our daily life. In fact, there are more and more enterprises use database to store their operations data. This data includes customers' products purchase data to help improve sales. In addition, payments receipts as re the data are used for accounting management. In order to manage human resources, the data include employee salaries and the payroll taxes are used. In addition to enterprise operational data, manufacturing relevant data includes production inventories, orders, and the supply chain data also be used for improved manufacturing efficiency. Banking and finance is also the field usually applies database to improve their operational efficiencies. This data includes customer information, accounts, loans, and the banking transactions data. Credit card transactions is can be also records in database to improve their management. In order to enhance finance management, sales and purchase of financial instruments such as stocks and bonds, storing real-time market data is also a good example of database application. And more and more university has successfully applied database to help manage students' registration.
filtration data and their grace data. And now more and more airlines companies also use database to help seize reservations and manage tourist schedules. And it is can be seen telecommunications companies apply database to help store the records of course, tax and data usage, essential data. Database also can be used in website service in other stores, online retailers, relevant data includes order tracking, customized recommendations, and online advertisements. In addition, documents, databases, and navigation systems are also good examples of database applications. For navigation systems, the data about the locations of varieties places along with the routes of roads, that is, the data related to geographies has to be recorded properly in database. The train systems and the bus related data also should be stored in database to have better navigation performance. As what I just mentioned, a database system can be regarded as a collection of interrelated data and a set of programs that allows users to access and modify this data. So, if we want to use database very well, we have to concern how to abstract this data property from our real world. In order to abstract this data, we have to do it by data models. Data model is the collection of conceptual tools for describing data data relationships, semantic, and the consistency constraints. As to data abstraction, as to data abstraction, is high the complexity of data structure to re represent data in the database from users through several levels of data abstractions. Later, I will demonstrate how to abstract the data property from real world. In order to demonstrate how to abstract data, now I will take examples about relational models. In relational models, all the data is stored in tables. The tables it also can be called relations. So lang is why is called relational models. Now let's take a look at the instructor tables. In these tables, there are four columns: ID, name, department names, and the salaries. These four columns represent the common attributes or common properties owned by all the instructors. So it is the outcomes we abstract from real worlds because It's also the outcomes we abstract from real instructors. And each record and each row 
represents a instructors in real words. If we abstract there the property of instructors, we can convert each instructor in the real world into a rows in these tables. So it's the process of data abstractions. And the source database is also can be regarded a process, the outcomes of abstraction, data abstraction. In order to demonstrate how to abstract data, now I will take examples of relational models. In relational models, all the data is stored in tables. Because the table is also can be called relations. That is why we call it relational model. Now let's look at the instructor tables in detail. In these tables, there are four columns, ID, names, department name, and the salaries. The four columns represent the common properties or common attributes owned by these instructors. So we can abstract the common attributes and the record them into the tables. After extracting the, these attributes, what we do just records their corresponding property and stores them into the these columns. So in these tables, each rows or we call each tuples represents a instructor in the real world. Basically, the department's table is also the outcomes of applying similar data abstractions. In the department tables, it includes department name, buildings, and the budgets, which also represents the common attributes abstracted from all the departments. And according to these attributes, we can record each department by stores its responding attributes in this table. So finally, we can produce the department table. In practice, database can be operated with the following architectures. First one is centralized databases. This architecture can provide database with one to a few cores and the shared memories. And the second one is client server. In this architecture, database can be run with one server machine along with multiple client machines. The third one is parallel databases. In this architecture, database can be operated with many core shared memories and the shared disk. The last one is distributed databases. This architecture provides database with geographical distributions and the schema heterogeneities. This slide indicates two varieties with respect to client server architectures. The two tiers architectures users play the roles of client 
and the database systems is server. If user want to communicate with database system, it has to go through networks. As to the three tiers architectures, use also play the roles of clients and the database system is server, but if user want to communicate with database system in addition to its own applications, it has to go through an extra tiers which call application server. So three tiers means users, application server, and database system. So far, if database runs with client-server architectures, it almost refers to three tiers architectures. According to different purpose of using database, users can be divided into different types. The first type is naive users who refers to the users with little experience of using database system. That is, they are unsophisticated users who interact with the systems by invoking one of the application programs that have been written previously. And second time is application programmers. They are the users with more experience about database. And they are computer professionals who can write application programs and they can interact with database system through their program. The third type is sophisticated users. These users usually can interact with the system without writing programs. It also means they can directly use database by using the database query language or using tools such as data analysis software. And the fourth type is specialized users who refers to the users can write specialized database applications that do not fit into the traditional data processing frameworks. This application includes CAD, graphic data applications, audios, or video. As to database administrators, who we can call DBAs. DBA is usually regarded as database managers. They are responsible for the following tasks, schema definitions and the modifications, storage structures and access method definitions. Sometimes they have to grant the authorizations for data access and they have to do the routine maintenance, including periodicals backing up the database. In addition, they have to ensure that enough free disk space is available for normal operations. And updating disk space if it needed. Monitoring jobs running on the database and ensuring the performance is not degraded by some tasks submitted by some users. Although database system is a modern technology and is still developing, in fact, this technology has been developed for several decades. 
if we trace the history of database system to 1950s and early 1960s, we can find that time there's no ideas about database because the computer's prototype just begun. Data is processed by using magnetic tabs for storage and punch cards for input. Everything is processed by a very, very simple way. Late 1960s and 1970s, hard disks is developed to allow direct access to data. At the same time, the ideas of database has emerged. So networks and hierarchical data models began to develop for laboratory use. At the times, the technology seems not so mature. After tech costs define the relational data models, several prototypes of relational database has been developed, such as system Rs and Ingress. Oracle also released the first commercial relational database. So it is the moving period for database development. Most of the database focus on high performance transactions processing. 1980s research relational prototypes began evolving into commercial systems. SQL became industrial standard at that time. And the parallel and distributed database systems was popular. Object-oriented database systems also attract much attention from research. 1990s, as the technology of database developed maturely, database can handle and process more data than before. So that times, large decision supports and the data mining applications, data warehouse applications were very popular. And the ideas of emergence of web commerce began. And recently, from 2000s, the technology of database had begun to enter the years of big data. So big data storage systems and the big data analysis attracted much attention from research and practice. So far, there are still a lot of application related to big data and this technology is still developing and I think this technology will be beneficial for our life in the future.